and by luck i came across this video on youtube by dr karen becker she discusses how dogs are carnivores how they have evolved from wolves and what their natural diet should be like and that got me hooked on to that the raw feeding wagon and i have been raw feeding my dogs ever since it has been 9 years that they have been on a raw diet and uh, they've been extremely healthy compared to all my previous dogs uh, between the two of them i've i've had four vet visits just changing 25% of that kibble with fresh oats will will make a huge difference to your dog's uh, life we've been told a lot of things about raw food raw, raw food has got bacteria your dogs are going to become aggressive and blood thirsty if they eat raw meat i think the pricing factor has to be considered before you get a dog i think education again plays a very important role in this we need to teach people that getting a dog is a full time responsibility hello my name is shobhit and welcome back to humans of the pack podcast In episode three, we are talking to Sagar. Sagar is the founder of Journey Pet Food and Edu Pet. He has spent over fourteen years in the industry, working with various dog shops, then kibble companies, home boarding setups, raw feeding companies, grooming parlors, before starting off his own startups, Journey and Edu Pet. Sagar has a wealth of wisdom to share with us all, and we'll be talking about all of it in our episode today. So Sagar is somebody who has been there, done that, a lot of experience and a wealth of wisdom to share with all of us. Sagar, very excited to have you join us today. Uh, where do we find you today? Where are you based right now? Uh, I'm I'm based in Kolhapur, and uh, it is very nice to be here. Uh, I'm I'm happy to connect with you and discuss uh, our journey with uh, with the pack. And uh, not been there, done that. I I think we are still doing it. been there doing it been there doing it <laughs> <laughs> lovely so sagar uh, just to start off right like we always start off with the back story i mean a lot of the pet professionals that we have seen and you know interacted with i would say even like close to 95% start their journey in the you know pet industry as you can call it i wouldn't call it industry i would call it more of a uh, it it's more of a welfare space right for us because we are doing something for the benefit of our companion right. animals right um but when they started one of the major reasons they started is, is because something that they experienced as a gap while they were raising their own dogs correct right? so what is it that you saw as a gap when you started and how did it inspire you to get into this um okay so this is this is a little lengthy answer uh I started off about 14 years back. I started off with a couple of pet shops, a grooming parlor. I used to home board dogs. I used to take hotel contracts to take care of dogs. And then I started working with dog food startups. Uh, I've been doing that for the last nine years. And eventually, last year, I decided that uh, it is time to launch our my own brand of uh, of dog food. And uh, I have completed my certification in canine nutrition. uh i do not do consultations though i my certification was very specific to raw feeding uh, just to make sure that i do not make any mistakes with my recipes uh and then that is how it has come up so now uh, last year we started journey uh, it has been uh, 13 months now since journey started and uh, yes so throughout this time i we have always had dogs i've had dogs since my childhood and all my dogs have faced some or the other health issue uh, back then we didn't know better we used to feed them milk and chapatis with a little bit of chicken or a little bit of uh, mutton and eventually when i got into this industry i started realizing that nutrition plays and uh, plays a very important part and my my yeah and uh, and uh, my first set of information about nutrition came from dog food companies okay so so although i am completely against kibble now uh, my journey started with uh, some dog food companies like some companies that were making kibble so there are different companies some better some worse and that is how it all started so i was uh when i when i um when i rescued my rottweiler uh i started feeding him 
uh, back then there was this Venki's uh, uh, dog food, uh, which was supposedly one of the better ones. And uh, through that, then I started trying to understand a lot more about nutrition. And by luck, I came across this uh, video on YouTube by Dr. Karen Becker. OK. And she discusses how dogs are carnivores, how they have evolved from wolves, and what their natural diet should be like. And it made a lot of sense. And that got me hooked on to that, uh, the, the raw feeding wagon. And I have been raw feeding my dogs ever since. It has been nine years that they have been on a raw diet. And uh, they've been extremely healthy compared to all my previous dogs. Uh, both my dogs, they are nine and a half years old. They'll turn 10 in December. Uh, between the two of them, I've, I've had four vet visits. That's it. In nine years? In nine years. Wow. Of which uh, all the four vet visits for, were for my Rottweiler. Okay. My Jack Russell Terrier has never, never been to a vet. So uh, the out of the four vet visits, three were injury related. Like once he was bitten by another dog, twice he had, uh, uh, he broke his nail. Okay. So nothing that you can control with nutrition. On uh, the fourth vet visit was tick fever. Uh, again, it was an infection. So nothing that, uh, that could be controlled by nutrition. So basically in the last nine years, we have not had any nutrition related vet visits uh, for either of my dogs. Wow. That's incredible. So, so that so, is how that that's how it all started and it's still going on. Wonderful. So a lot to unpack in in that four to five minutes that you spoke itself. I think Venkis is yeah. one of the largest poultry chains in the world, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And uh, also entering into the space today, I think, uh, with the initiative called Fur Crew. So very interesting to see that they have been there for a very long time and doing this and now they're pivoting and doing other things as well. And I think second, you spoke about Dr. Karen Becker. For those who don't know, she has written this wonderful book. Uh, uh, the Forever I, I think, yes, The Forever Dog by Rodney Habib, which is, I think yeah. uh, it has broken a lot of stereotypes in the dog nutrition space. Yes. Right. So if, uh, for, in, for viewers watching, like, you know, everything that Sagar said, you can go and actually do a much more deep dive on and form a lot more you know knowledgeable opinion as well and we'll get into this further in this chat today um so, but sagar I, I just want to break down now into the journey that you had in the raw food <clears throat> space right like yeah one of the things that pet parents are always sort of telling me is that oh, i did not imagine that you know raw feeding is uh, sorry i did not imagine that pet care in general is so expensive as when i got my dog for example right uh, I, I was influenced by a lot of what I saw on social media and all I saw on social media was, oh, you get a dog and the dog loves you and you love the dog and it's all happy, 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 right? <laughs> but they never told me, okay, you will have to spend for this and this and this and overall in a year, maybe you're spending close to 25, 30K, which is on the cheaper side. Correct. God forbid you go into some medical issues and then you're spending close to 60, 70K easily, right? For a lot of parents, that comes as a shock. Now. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up when you spoke about nutrition is because diet is one of the most common places where people tend to cut back, right? Right. We as Indians have this tendency to feed home cooked food, which is already cheap, right? We are cooking for ourselves. We also feed that to a dog. That was what was happening for the last 15, 20 years. Correct. Now, when we are transitioning to more like, you know, food that is curated by professionals, be it kibble, be it home food, be it subscription diet, be it raw food. People look at all these options and choose by pricing. Fair That's enough. the first thing that they think about. So when you started this, was that ever a factor for you? Did you ever consider pricing as a factor? And what would you tell parents who consider pricing as the most important factor when it comes to their dog's diet? Uh, so see, I, I will, I'll not say that pricing is not the factor. Okay. Uh, most of us come from a middle class family or a, maybe an upper middle class family and we have our budgets to work around, right? Uh, so yes, pricing is definitely an factor. Uh, uh, but I think the pricing factor has to be considered before you get a dog. Okay. Like how you said, you got a dog and then you 
thought uh, then you then you came up with oh this is the expense that is the expense and so on and so on right. i it's think, the worst I way think to do it. exactly so i i think uh, uh i think education again plays a very important role in this we need to teach people that getting a dog is a full time responsibility it is like having a child okay so when you have a child you you are already thinking about oh the school fees the the uh, the the food that is going to be required the other extra care that is required maybe medical expenses and so on and so on same thing applies to having a dog okay and uh, i have discouraged a lot of my my current clients from getting a second dog the idea is that if you think you have the uh, the capability of getting a second dog you rather improve your first dog's life is is nice. he getting is he getting the best life possible uh, are you are you taking him out do you, are you giving him enough time uh, are you giving him the best food that you can give or are you uh, holding back because of financial constraints so all this you have to work out and think Uh, rather than getting two dogs and dividing that attention dividing that financial situation between the two why not why not concentrate it on one dog and give him the best life that he can have so so i i i, I think that is how uh, that is how i think and uh, uh, that is how i have tried to groom most of my clients so think this way like in, you know you have to understand uh, getting Uh, a dog is not it's it's not a toy right uh, and i'm sure now after after years of being in the industry you would agree like it is 100% it, i mean there's there's a lot uh, that goes behind it and uh, there there should be a lot that goes behind it so, i think this is something that we all know intuitively but somewhere when we are making the decision of purchasing food or purchasing stuff for our dogs or right. just giving them the time we forget we forget that our dogs are living breathing creatures and right. just like how we focus on the quality of life for ourselves we also have to focus on the quality of life for our dogs correct and one of the most important things for the quality of life improvement is diet it all starts with diet 100% so yeah. so again i'm not saying that you should do the best that is available but you do the best that you can do so if uh, uh, again i don't recommend this but if the best that you can do is feed a decent quality kibble then do it then yeah, once yeah. you start doing it then understand how you can improve it yeah okay just changing 25% of that kibble with fresh foods will will make a huge difference to your dog's uh, life so if if you want to start off with kibble start off with kibble but but always keep on uh, trying to do better than what you are currently doing with your dogs wonderful so when you started your journey in the nutrition space what was the goal that you had for your dogs so i uh, so whatever i learned from that one video of karen becker got me hooked on to a chain of videos okay uh, and and that is where i thank youtube like you know everything is there available on youtube you all you need to do is search for it you want you want a good uh, raw food recipe search for it you will get it it is not rocket science everyone can do it at home okay uh, what companies like me are doing is we are only giving uh, convenience so so a lot of people who cannot prepare the food at home uh, companies like me are just providing convenience saying that uh, if you cannot prepare it here i will prepare it and give it to you but keep your dog on a on a natural healthy diet yeah okay. uh so yes so that is how um, the whole uh, uh, canon becker thing started off and with that i started by introducing raw food to my dog i was very apprehensive at at the, at the start okay like we've been told a lot of things about raw food raw food has got bacteria your dogs are going to become aggressive and blood thirsty if they eat raw meat uh, and to top that off i have a rottweiler okay so so first thing when i was adopting a rottweiler people were like oh you're getting a rottweiler rottweilers are aggressive dogs and then i started reading about rottweilers how to socialize them how to train them 
uh, today my rottweiler walks with me without a leash no matter where i go regardless if there are stray dogs barking at him he just ignores them okay and all this is thanks to that little bit of reading and a little bit of training and socializing that we've done and and everyone can achieve this i'm not a trainer okay and i have achieved this feat so uh, what what i'm trying to say is that it is not very difficult to do it all you need to do is invest time and when you can do that uh, you will have a very good relationship with your dog you will have a very good experience with your dog and that is what will help us uh, you and i grow this industry as well because if people do not yeah. have a good experience people are going to drop out people are going to abandon their dogs that will not help us in any way so so rather why not educate people so that they can better take care of their dogs so uh, one the dog has a excellent life the people who have the dog have a very good experience and then that joy keeps on spreading um so when you started off in the space and that was all uh, like about 9 years ago the general awareness in our country on pet parenting was even lesser than what it is today right and today itself is not that great and all of us are working towards enhancing education and enhancing the awareness level of pet parents all over the country but it must have been worse in like when you started back then right so what were the challenges you faced then and have you seen any improvement in the last 8 to 9 years uh i would say the challenges were same um uh so there is a lot of misconception uh, misinformation uh myths regarding raw feeding and uh, i would i would say they have not changed a lot what has what has changed though is the acceptance of raw and uh, a lot of people come to me when they have tried everything else they have tried going to the vet they have tried a, a lot of uh, medicines they have tried different types of treatments and when they cannot fix the issue then they come to uh, uh, then they come to someone maybe not just me but they then they come to someone who can teach them about natural feeding okay and with natural feeding you will see a visible difference in your dogs within 60 days we started off this by giving guarantees to our clients that 60 days on our food and you will you will see a visible difference in your dogs now um, sorry so what was it like when you say guarantee was it like you you will see improvement in 60 days or we'll return your money something like that uh no uh, we 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 never came to returning the money because we were not that big a company to do it to feed a uh, feed a dog for 60 days uh-huh. but uh, uh but yes but it was more about trust building like but, yes. we are there we are we are with you so, and we'll make way, sure it happens correct so the way i used to uh, talk to my clients was um you have tried n number of things you spent so much money doing it give this a try only for 60 days okay i am not i am not asking you for 6 months or uh, one year or whatever 60 days is all it requires especially if your dog has a health condition uh, like uh, skin problems okay you will see a tremendous uh, a change in your dog uh, energy levels go up the coat is nice shiny uh, it has a lot of uh, Uh, it has a lot of natural gloss it's a very radiant coat the dogs are healthier the if you see my dogs my dogs are 9 and 1/2 years old they look younger than dogs half their age when i take my dogs uh, so we recently moved to kolhapur i took them to the vet just to introduce my dogs to them uh, in case there is an emergency i need to go to the vet uh, when the when the doctor was doing their general checkup he asked me how old they are and uh, i told him doctor you tell me how old they are and he is like oh see i have a 3 and a half year old rottweiler uh, yours might be about 4 and a half years old and he was stunned when i told him he is 9 years old so okay so he looks younger than dogs half his age and yeah. and and i i and because we've had dogs all our life uh, i've seen the difference in these two dogs compared to all my previous dogs 
and the only thing we've actually changed is the food Wonderful. we've not changed anything else we've not changed their routines we've not changed uh, we were never uh, even as a family we are not very uh, medicinal uh, like you know we don't have very heavy usage of medicines we we rather do natural supplements and stuff like that and uh, when when you come from that mindset for yourself it is very easy to uh, to transition that to your dogs wonderful um so we have talked a lot about your rottweiler so you have to tell us their name now <laughs> <laughs> so my rottweiler is na uh, uh, he's named caesar oh and, wow yeah, and I have a Jack Russell Terrier. He's named Milo. What is the combination like? One is a huge dog with a lot of energy, and one is a tiny dog with a lot of energy. They are so a lot of energy. Pair. They are a perfect <laughs> pair. So Rottweilers are known to be slightly sluggish and lazy. They are called bean bags. Okay. Yeah. But when they so that is what I had also heard. Yeah. But when you take them out into an yeah. open area or they like run. to ground, yeah, they are yeah. like full of energy, yeah. always yeah. running around. Uh, on the other hand, Jack Russell Terriers are like Energizer Bunny. Okay, they are they are on the whole time. Okay, uh, you will see my my Jack Russell Terrier running around here and there, and for 15 minutes he's he is missing. No one knows where he is. He's under the sofa grabbing a nap, and after 15 minutes of recharge, he's again running around. Okay, and uh, uh, he is the one who keeps my Rottweiler active. Okay, so when my Rottweiler is just lying around having a good siesta in the afternoon, he will go, he'll jump on him, he'll bite his ear, he's, he'll pull his tail, he'll get him to, he'll, you know, he'll get him excited to play and uh, it's so, so it's a perfect combination. The and, and both the breeds are very confident by nature, right? Like yes. they are very self-assured. Yeah. So does that, has it ever been like, there has ever been a fight because both of them will be, you know, a little bit like, oh, I want this versus I want this. Has there ever been conflicts and uh, management of that conflict? Is it easy, tough? No. So I, I adopted my Rottweiler when he was six months old. Uh, at the time, my, my Jack Russell Terrier was actually my friend's dog. And wow. uh, he had to move abroad for some financial reasons. And I used to babysit them at home. Uh, so I used to babysit the Jack Russell Terrier at my place and they have grown up together. So they know each other's boundaries. They know each other's limitations. So if oh, I'm wonderful. feeding one, uh, so I feed both of them at the same place. Okay. Uh, I, I know that a lot of trainers would not, uh, would, uh, would flinch on this Like you know, that you should give food separately to avoid any but I know my dogs, I know how they are, they know each other. Uh, as long as they are at their bowl, they will not even go to uh, go to each other's bowl. Once they are done, then they do an inspection. So the Rottweiler will go to the Jack Russell's bowl and see if everything is cleared. If there are any bits and pieces remaining, he'll clear them out. And the Jack Russell will do the same to the Rottweiler's bowl. So it's a, it's a very harmonious relationship that the two of them have. They have yeah. never had fights. Uh, wow. But yeah, they've never had fights. But my Jack Russell Terrier was uh, so here in Kolhapur, uh, we've, we've got a pack of stray dogs downstairs. And uh, when I was walking my dogs off leash, some of the stray dogs uh, have come and tried to attack my Jack Russell Terrier because he's small and he does not back off. So, so being a Jack Russell, he's, he's actually going forward regardless if there are three, four stray dogs. And that is the time when my Rottweiler gets in and he diffuses the situation because he's double the size of these dogs, right? So they don't really, they don't have the same confidence. They don't, as, yeah, absolutely not. Like but nobody he does not has, attack them. Yeah. Even so humans are not, scared. Even humans are scared when they see a Rottweiler. So I can imagine like other dogs being totally uh, scared of it. But yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, a lot of stuff that you're saying is something that I just do as a disclaimer to parents, like Sagar has worked on it for years, right? He has the confidence after putting in the effort with socialization, early training, making sure that everybody's comfortable at home. And whatever he's saying today is something that comes from a lot of experience, right? So what happens is when, when 
uh, these things are heard by pet parents. We just, oh, off leash walking, great. Tomorrow I'll start off leash walking with my dog, right? That's that not way. that's not how to do it. Like, that way. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. And you have to put in a lot yeah. of effort. Like correct. Everything and it goes, related it is the same for dog. everything, whether it's training, whether it's diet, a lot correct. of effort is required from parent, including educating ourselves. Hundred percent. That that is exactly what I was saying. Everything related to your dog needs efforts from the humans. And let it be training, let it be nutrition, let it be anything that that you can think about. Uh, everything has to be learned, studied, and taught. So, uh, so just because you know something does not mean your dog knows it. So you have to teach it to your dog. And that's a wonderful way to talk about your second venture, which is EduPet. What is your goal with EduPet, and why did you start it? And what do you want to achieve with this venture? Okay. Um, so, okay. So, as I told you, I've been in the pet food industry for the last nine years. I Bombay, Pune, and Goa have been my primary markets where I've gone. I used to meet people. I used to meet vets. I used to meet trainers, nutritionists, uh, groomers, and so on and so on. Uh, I have been in the Bombay market for the last nine years. Okay. And this year I've come across a vet who does ozone therapy for dogs. Every month, uh, I would say on an average, every month I get at least one call saying that Sagar, my dog has got cancer or my dog has got tumor. What can we do? And we had no answers for it. Uh, unknowing to the fact that Ozone therapy is actually happening in my my own market, and it has been happening for the last twenty years, and I myself don't know about it. So, so if I being associated in the industry, meeting people, knowing vets, if I myself don't know that something like this is happening in my market, we cannot expect an average pet parent to know about this. That was Agreed. the that was the birth of EduPet. So something that is something good that is happening in the industry or something that can change our pets lives has to be promoted. And that is how the whole idea of EduPet came into uh, play. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you would agree with me when I say uh, half the problems that we face in uh, for for our uh, pets in the industry are because the pet parents are not properly educated. Okay. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So, so, uh, if we can educate the pet parents from the right source, okay. Uh, what we can do is we can again, achieve a better life for their pets, which in turn, uh, gives a better experience for the pet parents and eventually everyone is happy. So that is the idea of EduPet getting, getting the right people. Uh, speakers from different fields. We have we have trainers talk about training. We have groomers talk about grooming. We have nutritionists talk about nutrition. Uh, if at all we do invite vets, then they will talk only about their expertise, and so on and so on. So this yeah. was the idea that that uh, built EduPet. Very much needed. I think at the pack also, it's it's the foremost mission that we have is to spread education and awareness. Because there's so much that we don't know about our dogs, right? And somewhere I was reading that in just the last two to three years, the number of research studies on dogs in the US has grown by almost 10 to 20 times. So that is the amount of studies and research that we're doing about our dogs. But the problem is, as pet parents, we don't get most of this information. And I think initiatives like EduPet is very, very important in making sure that the latest understanding that exists around our canine friends comes to us as pet parents. Because I think all of us as pet parents, we want to do our best. There's no question or there's no doubt about it. Where we lack, though, is knowing how to do that best. Yeah. And uh, that is where I think that gap still exists. And I think hopefully EduPet can make a huge difference in the coming few years. So what are you doing today to, to bridge this gap, Sagar? Like, what are the initiatives or some things that you have planned for it? Uh, so we are holding our first seminar uh, on 6th of October. 
this is going to be a in person event so we are going to invite pet parents and experts onto one platform uh, and the experts will share their knowledge uh, so this is happening on 6th of october in mumbai now uh, based on how this goes we will uh, we will try to replicate uh, uh, the model in different cities um, and just to sort of ask you because a lot of people today prefer online or prefer in person right so where, where, when you chose that making this seminar happen in person what was the thought process that you had so so uh, i um, i'm i'm very passionate about raw feeding right uh, so i do webinars on on raw food basics of raw food uh, but when i do the webinar i see a lot of people have just switched off their cameras uh, because it is a very convenient thing they they are doing something else in the background uh, because they are in their uh, in the comfort of their home right uh, i believe that education does not work this way it it is okay for people to try it uh, and i'm sure uh, this uh, work from home or uh, the webinar thing uh, all boosted in in the lockdown but we are way past that and even schools have reopened there is a reason why the schools have reopened correct they could have easily sat in their own houses and gotten the education done but sadly education does not work that way there is a there's a lot more uh, uh, effort that is required from both parties from the teachers and the students and Thank all you. this can happen only in a uh, in a physical uh, in a face to face uh, setting so, so you're taking parents back my... to school yes <laughs> yeah so what have you planned for the 6th of october what can parents who are attending expect during this event and i think this is open not just for pet parents but also dog lovers enthusiasts anybody who wants to learn about anything to do with canine work correct correct so so for this 6th of october we've got four speakers uh, we've got mansi karamlekar from dogilicious she is going to be talking about nutrition uh, how it affects allergies intolerances and gut issues okay uh, because the, all the three uh, allergies intolerance and gut issues have similar symptoms so it is very difficult for uh, for the average pet parent to 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 differentiate between the three so she is going to talk about that uh, then we've got uh, dr rubina fatado she is a trainer based out of mumbai uh, thane uh, uh, she is going to talk about um, behavior issues that uh, that we see uh, during the adolescent stage of the dogs okay uh, because a lot of the times when people encounter that the teenage phase of the dogs and some behavior issues come up and if people do not know where to go for help uh, then they end up making a lot of bad choices at that time one can be giving up the dogs for adoption uh, the other can be neutering the dogs to calm them down okay uh, but uh, there is a third option and the the best option is to get a trainer or get a behaviorist to understand why your dog is doing that and uh, try to fix that issue right then and there so so dr rubina is going to talk about that then we've got uh, janvi duldoya uh, from mumbai she's a groomer um, she is going to be talking about uh, how to reduce stress in dogs during their grooming process uh, which is again very important because uh, people are getting the small toy dogs and the uh, all all the the designer dogs and they are struggling to uh, to maintain uh, the fur of the dog the appearance of the dog and we've seen a lot of videos of grooming parlors on on whatsapp doing rounds where the dogs are not being treated properly uh, so all this uh, should be addressed in in this session wonderful i can't wait to to attend this sagar it sounds really exciting and 
I think in person is a format that I think uh, we have been thinking about for a very long time. We have always been doing online educational seminars because it is convenient for us to reach a lot more pet parents. But in person is something that we've always been thinking about. And, um, you know, we never got to actually doing it. So really can't, can't, you know, can't hold back my excitement to see how well it is received by parents of Mumbai. And we hope that you have packed houses for it and personally can't wait to attend as well. Um, we can we can uh, work to doing it together in Bangalore. I am absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. want to touch the Bangalore market anyways. So uh, yes. Uh, so in in person does have a little. Um, it has its own charm. Like you know, it, it, there is a beauty about meeting other people who are like minded. Correct. There is a beauty yeah. about talking to the expert that you want to you know sort of get some help on and it sharing is, experience is different... with other pet parents. Correct. That is that is one thing that you do not get in a live uh, in a uh, in an online session. Yeah, because it's very respected. Parent will have some different experiences, and and each of us can learn something from everyone else. Hundred percent, couldn't agree more. I mean, as somebody who is building one of the largest communities of pet parents in India, I couldn't agree more with this. Like when you are actually speaking to people who are very much of the same intent and uh, trying to do best for their dogs, just like you are. You're always learning something new, always learning something new. Uh, wonderful. So one thing that I would like to sort of wrap up with Sagar is a lot of people that I personally know about are very, very enthusiastic about pet care, right? They are yeah. pet parents themselves. They see problems and they want to solve it. They don't want the problems to exist the way they are existing today, right? But they don't know how. So I believe that pet care has a lot of budding entrepreneurs. Uh, just waiting to begin. Uh, COVID was one time when a lot of people began their journeys, but I think there are just as many more waiting to begin very soon as well. So do you have any tips for budding entrepreneurs who are looking to start off in the space or have just started off and are figuring out their way or journeys from your experiences? What would you like to tell them? Uh, one thing uh, that I have very firmly believed on um, and I, I do use this uh, in all my ventures is collaborate. Don't try to do everything yourself. Uh, everyone who comes on to your team or who who you connect with has something different to offer uh, offer to your uh, to the company. So collaborate. Don't don't be afraid that you know if I collaborate with them, uh, what if uh, uh, what if they steal my uh, uh, Idea. uh customers or ideas or whatever mm -hmm. see we can't we can't build anything without a little bit of trust to begin with i am here discussing uh my uh, model again this is not a business model for me but i'm here discussing this and i'm sure i'm risking uh five other people who are going to duplicate this model which is fine uh everyone can do whatever they think is uh like you know that they can do better uh, I would rather want them to be associated with me and then we grow this as one unit and that is how we become a collective that is how we become uh, we get everyone on board so when you get everyone on board then you don't leave people behind to to start pulling you back that is that Couldn't is what, more. that is, that is my I, mindset on uh, Absolutely. And I think that somewhere, unfortunately, the pet care space has lacked in collaboration. Yes. That, will, that is my honest experience of being in the pet care space. That I have I have been working now in this space for over five years across a couple of companies. And I, I don't see the openness to collaborate in a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who are currently in the space. So if we do not collaborate, I don't think that we can make this kind of meaningful change that we all strive to make, right? Correct. And it is lovely to see that you are doing so much uh, to collaborate, to bring people forward, to bring organizations forward, to bring experts forward, to bring education into the hands of the people who need them the most, which is our pet parents of this wonderful community of uh, pet parent population in India. Uh, we wish you all the very best for your ventures, Sagar. We will be always cheering you on and uh, both for EduPet and Journey. And uh, for all those who are watching, 
who would like to know a little bit more about Educate and Journey, we'll be sharing the links in the description below. So do check them out. And uh, as Sagar mentioned, it's always, always, always a good idea to educate yourself. Make sure that you're putting in the effort as a pet parent to learn more about your dog, to learn more about your uh, how you can do better for them, and what more can be done to improve their life. Sagar, thank you so much for taking out the time, and I thank really you. look forward to your seminar. Thank you. Thank you.